As much as I like the new Bastion changes, and I think Blizzard is headed in the right direction as far as reworking Bastion goes to make him more viable at every level of play, I do not think the current Bastion can actually leave PTR. He is far too broken, not only at lower ranks, but at higher ranks as well, to actually see live play. He will ruin the competitive experience. This video is sponsored by Haste. Try it now for free with the link in the description to improve your connection to online game servers. Say goodbye to lag and high ping because Haste helps to improve these problems. Check it out, link is in the description. So back to Bastion. We all know Bastion right now isn't in the best state at higher ranks. He doesn't see any play, and when he does, it's used as a cheese strat and usually does not work. At lower ranks, Bastion is kind of an OP powerhouse from what I've heard, you know? Uh, and at ranks where people don't know how to deal with him, he can actually stomp games pretty hard, much like Torbjorn and maybe even some Metra. The thing is, the new Bastion is pretty much strictly buffed over the old one. I used to think it was more of some changes, but it is definitely strictly better than it used to be, which means at lower ranks we're running into an even bigger problem with Bastion than before, and lower ranks make up at least 50% of the game so we can't really leave these players out and on top of this at higher ranks we're seeing similar things to the old Genji meta remember back when Genji was totally busted eight second dragon blade uh, triple jump and all these other crazy things that Genji, Genji could do like ledge boost and all of this yeah Bastion is kind of like old Genji whichever team has the better one is going to win the game that is how powerful the current Bastion is on PTR and normally I'd say, you know what, this is this is fine, this is okay, I'd like to see it go live, I'd like to see pro players play it, and then Blizzard can make these changes, you know, and revert these changes later. However, this isn't as easy as it may seem either. You see, if you look back at how often Blizzard reverts changes or nerfs someone after buffing them, it takes them a long time. A really long time. Remember, D.Va was busted for, like, ever. Uh, Roadhog's Hook was busted for, like, Ever, um, there's been a lot of things that haven't really been addressed still. Blizzard takes a long time to do things. They like to take their time with their decisions and really think them through, which is why I really don't think this Bastion should go live, because if this version of Bastion hits live servers, he will single-handedly take over the competitive scene, and it will be a long time before we see any nerfs that put him in a good place. Either Blizzard will try to nerf him too quick and they will over-nerf him, or maybe not even nerf him enough, or they will just simply take too long to figure out a change that is appropriate for him. I think they should find a change that is appropriate for him before they send him to live servers and I don't think new Bastion should go live uh, at the start of this next season I just don't think it's a good way to start off the season with a hero that is this impactful and speaking of how impactful he is I guess I should go over what exactly makes him OP I've talked about it in the past you know all of his changes up to now make him kind of a tank and I'm not making that joke because of his ult. When he's just in sentry form, he's super tanky as well. And we can't forget that he is like the highest base DPS in the game. That combination, uh, the only downside to that is a lack of mobility. And even though a lack of mobility is admittedly a huge downside, when Bastion's team protects him by placing shields near him, having a Zarya nearby, having healers on him, it makes it so the enemy team needs to really commit to killing the Bastion before they can do anything else. They need to commit over two people to kill the one Bastion because there's not really any good counters to him right now. He's just really powerful. And if the enemy team is protecting the Bastion, you're easily need going to need to commit your entire team just to kill him sometimes. And that just doesn't seem fair. Six people to kill one? And the thing is, you don't even have a guaranteed kill on him all the time. I talk about how he has a lack of mobility, but they basically buffed his mobility by allowing him to heal while moving. The ability to heal while moving and through damage is definitely a mobility buff, because before... If he was getting shot and he was low, he'd basically have to stay in sentry mode and try to win the fight or just stay in one area and kind of strafe. Now he can move to cover while healing and it does definitely 
kind of, in a way, increase his mobility. It increases his effective mobility. So the one downside Bastion has isn't even a huge downside anymore, which is kind of crazy. Even the heal alone is crazy. If we ignore the fact that he can use it while moving, healing while in sentry mode is completely busted because you have that damage reduction and you can heal through damage. I'm going to go over more of these examples later, but let me give you this one for now. Hanzo's Dragon Strike can barely kill you as Bastion if you're in sentry mode and you're healing. If you receive any healing from an outside source, one shot from Ana, a little bit of healing from Lucio, you can survive a Dragon Strike just by sitting in sentry mode and healing yourself through it. It can barely kill you on its own. That's ridiculous. You shouldn't be able to do that. Dragon Strike should be one of those things that counters Bastion. You throw that in his area and he is forced to move himself. The one counter, one of these counters to Bastion being Dragon Strike is now removed because he barely needs any help to survive it without even moving. And if he's onanated or there's a healer anywhere nearby, he won't even drop below 50% HP surviving that Dragon Strike. All of his counters have seemingly been removed. He's just a crazy powerhouse that is the focus of every game. If the defensive team has a Bastion, that's your job. Kill the Bastion. And games are going to be coming down to now which team has the better Bastion. Like it was with Genji. Whichever team has the better Genji wins the game. And that's not the way Overwatch should be played. Overwatch is a team game. I understand Blizzard if they want to make it so you can carry, but this isn't the way to do that. This hero is just too powerful. He can carry too much. While we're on the topic of what used to counter Bastion, I'd like to give you some statistics I found on Reddit that tell you how long it takes to kill a Bastion using some heroes that used to kind of counter him. Are you ready? Far needs to land five direct hits. Widowmaker needs to land five fully charged body shots, and you're not going to be able to crit him unless you're behind him, so that's not really an option. PTR Bastion can survive a pulse bomb and a scatter shot, not at the same time, but separately when he's in his tank mode or his sentry mode because of his new passive. Even if Tracer gets behind him and lands her whole magazine right into his critical hitbox, it will not kill Bastion. He will not die because of it, because of his new passive. Tracer cannot one-shot Bastion, and there's pretty much no way Tracer can kill Bastion anymore. Unless she lands that Pulse Bomb, lands a bunch of critical hits, and the enemy team isn't all over their Bastion trying to kill the Tracer and heal the Bastion. It's just so un impractical. Like, for Tracer to not counter Bastion anymore really is another way of showing that he's kind of too powerful. You used to be able to take a flanker, get up behind him, either Tracer or Genji, and be able to take him out. Now, at best, Tracer can take out Bastion, but will 100% of the time die in the process. And that's not even a guaranteed kill. Tracer will probably die more often than the Bastion dies. So at best, you're getting a one-for-one. One. At worst, you're killing yourself and not getting anything from it. Bastion's crazy. McCree takes seven shots to kill a Bastion in sentry mode. Now that's just straight unfair if you ask me. There's no counterplay to that. McCree kind of can't beat Bastion anymore when Bastion is in sentry mode. Even if McCree has good aim, he has to be close enough to be getting fully damaging shots. You know, no damage drop off at all, and it takes seven of them. Which means if he even wants to kill him in a remotely fast manner, which it won't be, it'll be slow, he's going to land all six shots, combat roll, and land another one. You think Bastion isn't going to kill the McCree by then? Guess again, because Bastion will definitely kill the McCree by then, or heal. These are all not including the heal. When we factor in Bastion's heal, it basically doubles all the amount of damage Bastion needs to take to die. For fun, let's go over a few other things Bastion can survive just by healing while in sentry mode. Are you ready? Reaper's entire ultimate. Reaper's entire 8-shot clip. Farah's entire clip. Torbjorn's level 2 turret can never kill Bastion. It just doesn't deal enough damage. He can always heal more than the damage it's doing. Torbjorn's Molten Core turret. He can, you know, survive the entire length of Molten Core. Symmetra's laser doesn't deal any damage while he's healing. Six Symmetra turrets don't deal any damage while he's healing. Genji's entire ultimate, an entire Dragon Blade, cannot kill the Bastion if he's healing. Soldier's entire clip plus rockets, Tracer's bullets, Tracer's ultimate, McCree's ultimate, Zarya at 100 charge firing her entire clip. Junkrat's, you know what I'm saying here. I'm not going to list these off forever. 
Nothing can kill the new Bastion. If you thought that was bad, you haven't even seen Bastion with Nano Boost now, where he gets 70% damage reduction. It actually, I think, was 85% for a while, because he gets 50% from Nano Boost and 35% from his passive. However, Blizzard actually lowered the cap to 70%. That's still crazy though. 70% damage reduction is not something that should exist because it actually makes you unkillable. Bastion doesn't even need to heal. There's basically nothing in the entire game that will kill a nano boosted Bastion while he's in Sentry or tank form. An entire self destruct from D.Va can't even kill a nano boosted Sentry Bastion if it's right next to him. If that can't kill him, nothing can. And this is without heals once again. Once we factor in the fact that Ana's heals are still admittedly insanely powerful, Bastion seems like a pretty powerful pick that should always be picked on defense. And when combined with a Torbjorn and a Symmetra, you can get this guy to 450 HP, and if he somehow drops down to his regular amount of 300 HP, with all of that damage reduction and armor and regenerating shields, you have people like Ana who can then keep him alive. First point holds are now going to be stronger than ever with Bastion, and good luck ever capturing the second point on 2 CP, because that was already hard enough. Now you've got Bastion to deal with on top of it. He's simply too powerful, and I don't think he should be incorporated into the game at his current state. I'm not actually sure what should be done. If you would like to see a video about what I think should be done to New Bastion, tell me and I'll make an entire video about it. But right now I just know we need Blizzard needs to stop and take a little more time to think about this, cause cause it's just not fair. Tell me what you think down below. Uh, be sure to leave a comment and uh, tell me uh, also your favorite topping on pizza because uh, I'm hungry again. And then once you're done with that, click the video on screen because that will then get you a free pizza. I'll see you guys all later. Have a good one. Lone Hawk out.